Okay, we're back at it. Flying Fox Fruits here. We're in the Red Jabadikaba Grove. This video is really gonna be about maintenance, troubleshooting, and just general care for the Red Jabadikaba. And this is in an area where it's a little too hot. These trees would be doing better if I had a shade cloth around the top of them. I planted these from seed, gosh, it's probably about 10 years ago. And they're all about the same age, but they're at different sizes. So I'm gonna walk you through right now on the smallest side of the grove and show you some of the trees and flip the camera around. So starting over here on the southwest side of the grove, the trees are pretty small. There's weeds everywhere. I've got the whole thing surrounded by shade cloth to keep the chickens from just walking in and stealing the fruit. It works really well, but it doesn't stop squirrels and songbirds. But the chickens were really devastating and this helped stop the chickens. Like I said before, this whole thing would do a lot better with shade cloth all over the top. And I'm, I'm saving up to do that eventually to put shade cloth over the whole thing. I probably about 30 to 50% shade would just be tremendous in the summertime when we don't get as much rain and it's very hot. These get cooked and you have a lot of this nasty looking growth here. And even when you see these coming on, these um, epiphytes, it's bad. They don't, they should have no chance to get footing on the tree. That should have peeled off by now. So I'm gonna have to go through today and definitely hit this with the weed eater, which is what I'm going to do. And let's walk through. These are some of the smallest ones and I swear they're eight to 10 years old, I believe. Yep, a little runty one right here. This is the smallest of the bunch. And then these are all the smallest trees I put on this corner with the tallest trees to the north. And that's an old grower's trick. If you think about the plants like they're at a stadium and the sun is the subject that everyone wants to see, the short people need to be at the front seat and the tall people need to be at the back seat. So the sun goes from east to west and as the winter comes, it drops down in the horizon. So in the summertime, it goes straight up and in the wintertime, it drops down. We want to make sure that these short plants have a chance to get full sun exposure in the wintertime. So that's why we put the short ones to the south tall ones to the north and i also try to spread them out east to west if i can if they have like a spread canopy that's goes you know if it's a wide tree from left to right i'll spread it out east to west to get maximum sun exposure anyhow so these are some of the trees and they fruited really well last year you see some of the damage from the old rotten growth from being too hot this is like fungus and mold but the trees grow right out of it as soon as the weather changes this is a bad sign when you see this and too much overhead irrigation you get these lichens are bad news you want to get rid of them underneath it's healthy but it needs to peel away those stupid lichens are not good for the tree people say that they're not they're not harmful well it's not true for jabbaticabas they are encapsulating the tree so the trees look pretty good considering what they've been through. I'm trying to show you some of the old growth, how nasty they look like that. And then the new growth comes out looking good once it gets a chance to have some weather that is not burning. This tree over here is the one out of a whole bunch. It was the first to fruit out of all my trees and it looks like it's gonna die. It got really hot and I don't know, it just, fungus got a hold of it. This is the one tree out of the bunch that looks like it could really die. I'm gonna have to replace it. And it just got unlucky in a really hot spot. All the other ones around it are doing good. One out of 64 trees died. And it was some kind of something that got to it. it. Must have been heat, fungus. And of course it was the first tree out of all 64 to flower. So it's, that's kind of weird. Like if a tree's flowering soon, it means it's probably weak in other ways. Now we're making our way over to the tallest, biggest trees of the bunch that I had, which are probably a little older in some cases than the other trees that I have over there. Did you see some of the fruit on them? They've had crops where they're covered, but you're gonna need to get rain to have that. And we haven't had any rain. So all I've got is dead branches, stupid air plants and lichens from overhead watering to keep them cool. But that's all changing, the season's shifting. We're gonna come in here, show you a little bit how I fertilize them, 
how I weed eat and prune. I need to take suckers off of the base of the tree. Let's see if I can show you some suckers that need to be taken off. Let's see. All this stuff like this, I gotta take this off. These lower branches that are trying to come, I'm gonna have to come through and get this stuff like this. See these, and some of them are so big that I need to come in with a chisel and knock them with a chisel right along here and knock these off with the chisel. I'll show you how to do that. And we'll come in and prune up the trees and open up the canopy, take off any dead limbs, any crossed limbs, and just try to beautify these trees. It's gonna take me a while to do this right. I might not, <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to do the whole grove within a day, but let's go ahead and fire up the weed eater. Let me get this party started. You think I can figure out how to start this thing? Let's see. First, you press the on button three times inward. Then you shift this over, and then you do this. Come on. Uh-oh, I think I choked it too much. Can I do this, guys? Button it. guys I'm exhausted I just uh it's like 100 degrees and I went in for a good 20 30 minutes let's take a look at what I did over here I'm not even done yet okay I let this go a little too far I let this go a little too far but here's the progress I made here's the progress we made getting there my hands are shaking from that that mower my hands are buzzing Trying to hold it still, but you see how they pop out much more? You're gonna get a lot less problems with mold and fungus and all that kind of stuff. Oh, trying to keep my hands from shaking. But this was the hardest part to do right here. You see how much better it looks already? When I when I get in and prune these and fertilize them, it's gonna be night and day. They're already looking a lot better just being weeded. I still have this portion to do over here. This video is gonna take a lot longer to do than I was anticipating. This is an hour's job of pruning and fertilizing. So whew, my hands are literally shaking from that dang mower. All right, still got about 15 more minutes of buzzing to do. I'm gonna take a break. I'm exhausted. Well, here we are. It's day two. This time I've got some eye protection. These glasses really suck. They're scratched up all to hell. I tried to clean them, but better than nothing. We've got some eye safety. We've got a different hat now. This is a different gauge hat that's less likely to fall off. We've got a long sleeve shirt and back to our a clean pair of jeans, no socks and some old shoes. So we're gonna take this wee beater right here. Still, I wish I had a commercial one. Oh, you know what? I think I gotta restring this. Uh, I'm gonna restring this, I think, maybe not, but we'll be right back. We're gonna go hit that grove one more time. This is taking a little longer than I anticipated. Really hot out here. I picked the worst time of day to do this, as always. We're gonna pick up right where we left off, and you know what else I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna take down this netting all around the grove and replace it with a wire cage. I don't know if I'm gonna regret that or not. I maybe just talking out of my I think I got it restrung with some better string here. Let's see if I strung it up right or if I if I messed it up.
So, as you can see, now the trees are popping out a lot more. You still have these weeds that are like grew up through the canopy. I'm gonna have to go down when I prune the trees and pan pull some of the weeds at the base. We'll do that when we get there. But for right now, I came as close as I could to the base without hitting the trees with the, with the weed eater. It's okay if you hit them a little bit, but don't hit them too hard. This one was hiding some fruit on it. Look at that. The animals are eating it all. I see it on the ground and stuff. Okay, so <clears throat> just look at how much nicer the trees look. This is gonna promote air circulation, make less fungus, give more nutrition to the trees, less bacteria and all the disease. The trees are gonna be unrecognizable <clears throat> when I'm done with them, excuse me. And I inhaled all sorts of crazy stuff here. I didn't like it and didn't inhale. <sighs> you gotta wear that eye protection, but it was fogging up. I just threw it away and I would close my eyes every time I pulled the trigger on that thing really hard on that weed eater. But just wanted to walk through show you some of the work I did. You can actually see through the rows. This is the big part. We're gonna have the Jabba Maze in uh, Halloween time coming up, okay? Yeah, not a lot of fruit on them now, but after I fertilize them and prune them, they're gonna come through. I'm debating whether or not to take down this net. I may or may not. May end up leaving it up because I don't need extra work, but eventually I have to take it down. So next, we're gonna go on to the next phase of pruning the suckers at the base of the tree and pruning off any dead wood, but I gotta remove all the branches. That's like another day or two. This is, this is day two, but the job that I'm doing now, I might have to put Clark up to it. He'll help me out. And there's that one dead tree. Just didn't make it. I'll be able to replace it. I think it was just in the perfect spot to get killed and it was already weak, but everything else looks really good. 63 trees. 63 trees, not 64 anymore, but we'll plant one in its place. All right, we'll be back with a completed video. Hang tight, it's a hot one, 94, 95 degrees at least. Yeah, we made it to the front of the house here and we have assembled a Civil War doctor's assembly of tools to perform surgery on these trees. That's what, kind of what I feel like is like an archaic doctor of sorts, but we're gonna use this lighter hammer. I think this one's a little heavier for what I wanna carry. We got a hammer, we got a, a chisel type of thing that I got from Home Depot. That's gonna be really nice. We have this crowbar. I don't think I'm gonna use the crowbar. That's gonna be too heavy to carry, but you could use that if you only had that. The machete I might use, I might not, to kind of get leverage and, cut, yeah, and cut stuff off. And uh, that blowtorch we could use to sanitize stuff, but I'm not even going to sanitize anything. I think it's all pretty clean. We're gonna, we'll get Clark to help film. We're going to be out there in the grove, Bubba. See you in a minute. Okay, we made our way over to a tree that needs attention. There's certain branches that I'm going to prune on this and certain ones I'm not. You want to keep all the biggest branches and get rid of anything that you think may be crossing or spindly and small. If you're in a rush and you don't have any tools, you can just take your hand, pull down against the angle of the branch and it comes right off. Those are That's okay for little branches that you wanna pull off. I'm not too worried about the ones further up. It's when you get down closer to the base and towards the interior of the tree. I'm trying to get rid of any of this little stuff in the middle that's crossing. But further up, it's okay to have more of that. You, you could definitely use pruning shears if you're worried about hurting your tree, but my advice is kind of just pull, pull down away from the angle of the branch. And then you can twist them off if you have to. But they come right off for me. I'd say come and just kind of pull them down like that. You, if you did that with an, the Anona, you'd give a huge shred. But let me show you at the base, because this is most important. We're gonna have to come down here and get rid of all this stuff down here because it's, it's taking away energy from the tree where it could be fruiting. And now it's sending out all these suckers. And I'm gonna take that chisel and I'm gonna try to bust that off. You can, you can I would give them to Clark to try to grow out. You can try to propagate these that way too. So hold on to the camera for me, Clark, could you? Yeah, and then so what I'll do is I'll take this. I always take it and kind of fold it down to where I can see what I'm working with. There, get everything out of my way. Take my hat off, get this sucker out of my way here. All this shit out of my way. Okay, I got it. Oh, I see what I need to get rid of. 
Now I take this chisel, wedge it in, and then You don't want to hurt the roots too much, but I'm taking this thing out. It's going to be bothered. It's like surgery. You got to go work your way around it. I see another. See where it can come off right here. Sometimes you'll just get it perfectly and you're like, oh, I got it. And it comes right off. I don't know if that was it yet. We're getting really close where I can almost pull it. I'm going to give this to you, Clark, to try to propagate. I'm feeling for the roots. I feel where they're at with my finger and kind of go against those roots and try not to hurt the main tree. But you're gonna do a little damage to the main tree because you're basically pruning these off. One more hit, I think I'll get crazy. Sometimes you keep missing. Coming guys, if I had fire. Whew. I'm gonna get one blow over here and I bet you it'll come. Let's connect it out in front. I keep going to the back. Come on, buddy. No, no. Yeah. So that method I was using there is really archaic and probably not the best method, but it will work, I guess, in a pinch. You're not gonna see me doing that for every tree. I'm gonna have to figure something out either pulling them with some kind of pliers or tying something around it and ripping them out. But it only took me about another five or six hits since I turned off the video to get these really nice suckers out. These are actually something that are propagatable. We'll try to root those up because they already kind of have roots coming out. So those are them. And you can see where I kind of went to work and I still got to come in and hit that one off right there. Damn, this thing won't focus. You gotta come in after that. You gotta dig around, find where it's connected, saw it off. Okay, we can take the suckers out like that. It just takes a lot of energy. Look at this one I got, Clark, with the roots on this. Wow. Yeah, look how long. We're definitely gonna try to pot that thing up. It's wow. got a foot long root and a big stalk. That thing will fruit in a year. So you gotta keep them in the shade. I didn't even think about propagating these. I was just ripping them off. We got one more here that I'm trying to get off. I'm feeling with my finger where it's connected. This is not the best chisel. You could use a wider one. This is just what I have. Try not to hurt myself. Um, I'm not gonna do this for every tree, but I wanted to show you kind of how we're getting them out. This one seems like it's getting loose. You can twist them, you can pull them. Pop it. Twist it. We're just gonna keep kind of hitting at it and working at it. I'm trying not to damage the root system of the existing tree too much, but in some cases, you gotta. Is it worth doing it for one scraggly? It's not, it's to get them out of there. Hell yeah, it's worth it. I want these things out of here. They're pissing me off. Oh, okay. They're taking up space. Oh. Yeah, I want them gone, but I need to dig out with my fingers and find exactly where they're connected and hit that spot and I keep missing. So I think we're connected along this back side. So we're gonna kind of probe around and we feel something. Okay, try not to take our fingers off. Right there, I think. We're hitting something here. Sometimes it feels really good when you hit it and you, and, it's, and you know you got it and it pops right off. Oh, this may be it. I may be hitting something I should have just done. Let's see. Yeah, that feels good there. I see where I gotta go. Right like a cat chair. This tree is just about cleaned up. We got this one one here, but damn, if I didn't get every sucker on that tree, I mean, that is really, that was like going to the dentist for George Washington back in the day. Look at that though, look at that I pulled out. 
But those are the suckers. We're gonna try to pop them up. This is all the, all the suckers we got. These are like cavities, bro, wooden cavities. All right, guys, you can shut it off now. We'll be back. So luckily not every tree is gonna need this root sucker pruning treatment. And the, what I was doing before is like pretty hard to do. It's probably not recommended for everybody. This is a knife my mom bought me. Pretty pink knife from A.M. Leonard. Soil knife. We're gonna try this thing out here and see if we can get some action with this. See if I can unsheath it here. I'm having trouble. Haven't even used it yet. It's got that serrated edge there and a decently sharp tip, so let's see what she does. All right, I'm gonna come down here, pull the weeds on it. All right, kind of break all the suckers off by pulling down everything I can with my hands here. This one may not have any suckers at the base. It may just be an easy prune job with just my hands if I'm lucky. They're coming right off. No pruning shears or anything. The bark's not tearing. Now this is where I think I'm gonna have to work at it down here. Right here. This is where we have some suckers, yep. Right here, this is a problem for me. So you kind of dig the soil away a little bit as much as you can. Don't cut your hand on the knife. Pull that knife away. Look out for ants, pygmy rattlesnakes, dog feces, rat feces, hantavirus. You name it, Bubba. Sometimes we see if you can get it by hand. You can't get it by hand. <clears throat> Some dirt in your mouth. That's always good. Now, ah, it'd be nice if I didn't have the the camera in my hand. This is one hand is very difficult, but this knife I think is the ticket. It's really good. I'm not trying to save these. I'm just trying to cut them out. But I'm starting to thank my mom for getting me this. Much better than the other option that I was using. But now I can twist and get it out. Much easier than using a hammer and a chisel, you see? I show people the wrong way to do stuff so that I can show you how to do it the right way. Trial and error. That was a lot easier and this is twisting right out. Come on up. That felt really good. And I'm sure you could try to plant that, but I'm not gonna. Just want it out of there. I want it cleared out. That was wonderful. This tool my mom bought is the perfect tool. Much easier than using the chisel. Now the chisel is gonna work for bigger for bigger roots. But that was just perfect. And you twist and pull. And I'm cleaning up the bottom of these trees. It's gonna take a long time to get these looking the way I want them. I don't know if I'm gonna do the whole grove, but I may just do half of it and show you the finished product for half. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be so lazy. Just finish it off. But this one's pruned up pretty good. After a couple more branches, I'll say I can quit. This one's over here, this guy there, this guy there, this guy there. I think we're almost there. Now let's take a look. That's a lot better. See, I got all my thick branches and thinned them out and then you can have stuff going on up there where it's crossed or twigs are there. This part doesn't matter, it's really that kind of, that portion there. All right, we'll keep moving on. All right, here's a downright nasty sucker I found right by a fruit, too. Look at that, that's nasty. I want that out of there. I don't know if this knife can do that. This is awful big, so I'm gonna kinda etch out around it and see if I can do this without hurting myself. Maybe it can do it, it feels really good. Yeah, look at that, it's coming right out. The knife is the ticket. So, thanks again, Mom. Soil knife. Oh, wow. Holy snake. This one is almost tempting to put in a pot. I mean, I can't not put that in a pot. Look at that. So this has turned into a Jabba de Kaba root propagation video by accident. 
but that is good material where it may fruit in two years. A lot faster than planting a seed, I'll tell you right now. There's some mature wood in there that will actually throw flowers in a year or two, I bet you. Really good bonsai material. And I cleaned up my tree, so it's like a win-win situation. Those things really bother me at the bottom of the tree. They take away vigor. Some of those might be the result of polyembryonic seeds where these are actually separate seeds that are coming up. And they would probably fuse with the, the trunk in time if I just let it grow out naturally. This is just what I choose to do. And it's not necessary for everyone to do it. You can let your tree just sucker out, but I just do this to keep them uh, managed. And of course I pull off these suckers so we're actually getting somewhere. This soil knife is the ticket. I'm sure there's other products that would work similar, but I don't know how much it costs, but I think it was made in Italy. All right, guys, we'll be back. Here's a perfect example of some of the stuff you want to take off from the top of the canopy. And you can usually tell because it just breaks right off and it's dead. You probably want to throw this away and burn it, but I'm lazy and I just kind of throw it on the ground. Definitely not smart. You probably want to dispose of it properly if you want to maintain a good grove but my theory is is that the tree has these died back branches because the conditions weren't right and now that the conditions are good we probably won't have another explosion of bacteria or fungus and the tree will be able to grow but if you have horrible conditions you're going to get lichens dead die back branches it, it doesn't kill the tree but it sets it back so you can go through and just kind of feel what's pliable and what breaks off. Let's see if we can find some big nasty branches that need to be broken off. This is stuff that just needs to be kind of tip pruned and you can, you really don't even need your pruning shears. You just kind of bend down and if it's dead, it's dead. Here's a nice big nasty, see this right here. This is from being too hot, too dry and look, and it goes to where pruning shears would have been good there. You see, I did tear the bark a little bit, but I'm gonna prune that back anyway, so. Pruning shears would have been good there. I don't have them in my hand. I don't have them in my uh, possession right now, so I'm kind of breaking the tree apart a little bit. But anyhow, they're strong trees. This is probably giving someone a, a headache watching me do this. I'll come back and, and trim that up. But that's definitely how you don't want to leave a branch trimmed. We'll come back and we'll, we'll probably prune it back to to right over here. Yeah, we'll prune it back to this part right here. Yeah, and it just keeps going and going. Look at this dead branch I just pulled out. This is all the, from the horrific summer we had. Some little dieback twigs that we'll clean up tree to tree. Let's see, oh yeah, look, this is a perfect example. Let's see how this one breaks. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, wow. Didn't need pruning shears for that. It came right off. And that must be some kind of a fungal, bacterial dieback too hot too wet you see it's covered in lichen throw that on the ground hell no we're gonna throw that out out of here okay but look at the rest of the tree is fine it's just one portion of the tree that died back little branches here it's starting to rain actually and the trees love that that's what's making them so happy these conditions lack of rain means it gets really hot and unforgiving here's See how that works? And the, pli the pliable part is alive. Oh, the part made it through. Come here. Come here! Mm, tastes all right. I thought I saw a fruit over here. I'm just hallucinating. So these are the um, suckers that I potted up. This is the one I just dug up. It looks really nice. You can't see. It's covered with dirt. You can't really tell, but it's got a nice trunk in there. Starting to rain. This is perfect conditions. I ripped off some of the leaves to um, reduce the surface area so they don't lose as much water. But I ripped off some leaves so they'll recover faster. Hopefully they live. They got some nice trunks on there that could fruit. 
if any of these fruit will post an update but this is just a unexpected part of the video it's starting to rain now we'll come back to it but we got about seven cuttings here from the roots red jabo tikaba i'm gonna video right now showing clark over here on this tree they look a lot better since we pruned them up well it's really the rain that did it don't you think clark uh yeah and the fertilizer I'm gonna fertilize them again before the end of this video. One more bag. Uh, one just more. Him, didn't yeah, man. I don't know. One more bag, though. I see. I see seeds under this tree, and then there's some suckers. I'll get at the bottom, maybe. And I think. Oh, these ones luckily are all above ground. Nothing that is big that I have to pry out. That's good. Well, there's maybe one down there I gotta pry out. I've been having a lot of trouble getting them out. Oof. Looking really good though. All right, we're underneath the tree. Clark's got control of the camera. Come over here and show him what we're working with. This is something that's just beyond regular pruning where we have to use the tool. This is the, the garden tool that's been helping out a lot. Sometimes this is really easy, sometimes it's not. I search for the in-between part. Uh-oh, this feels like an easy one maybe. This is the preferred method if you can do it. See if we can get it out. This could be dangerous to your fingers if you don't watch it. I've had a couple close calls where I was being an idiot. Just kind of dig around it and just kind of lift up. Sometimes you give them to pop right out. This one seems like it might go, but I did want to show you. It is a bit painstaking, the process we're going through, but I have to do this. Or these things are just, they bother me. Right? Maybe it's just an OCD thing or whatever. A lot harder than I thought. So. Oh yeah, that's a big ass one. Yeah, I, I, this one may be beyond what I'm capable of digging out. <laughs> it's always when I get Clark with the camera, I can't do it. This is an embarrassment. Shit. Uh-oh, 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 I think I got it. I think I got it, I think I got it. Oh, you're digging sod, Oh, good fellas, the movie. Maybe we will in a second, a couple more. I got it. That was the hardest one I've ever taken out. All right, we can end. All right. Now that we have the grove weeded up, most of the suckers pruned, just got under all the trees and pulled weeds basically as best as we could. There's still some junk underneath it, but they're looking good. There's definitely fruit on several of the trees. No award-winning crops out here, but some good looking trees for sure. This one still needs weeds pulled at the base. So what I'm doing is kind of like this. It's ready for fertilizer. Not the best quality fruit, but they would be good to eat. But it just looks really good in here. The last step is going to be to put down some fertilizer. And I got Clark over here to help me with that. Doing a great job out here, but look at some of these trees, how pretty they are. These two are some of the prettiest ones here.
All right, we're gonna start fertilizing from the smallest side to the biggest side, because the smallest ones need it most. And we're gonna use holly tone. You can find it at Home Depot, Lowe's. It's a good product. We're gonna use about a pound per tree or more. I think because of how much we have, it's probably just gonna be uh, about a, a full scoop per tree if you can. Yeah. Just right around the base until you run out, going from the smallest to the biggest. Yep. I'm just try to get it right at the base of the tree. Bada bing, bada boom. And then you know they love it because of that mycorrhiza. This is the final product. And then they should have fruit on them. We'll have an update video soon. Thanks for your help, uh, help Clark. I'm a stuttering fool, I notice. But these videos do to you. Uh-oh, chicken in. Chicken made it in. Barbara. Dirty old Barbara made it in. How'd she make it in here? How'd you get in here, Bubba? Is it just you? She's like Chucky. Wanna play? Can't tell where she went. She's over here scratching around. Oh, there's two of them in here. Penguins in here too. They need to make their way on out. They found a break in security, breach in security. Here's what happens when you let them in. Go right for the fruit. All right, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.